Hello, welcome to another edition of On Our Terms, a video series by AIA Contract Documents. Today, we will be talking about the owner's program and the project's physical characteristics, which are sections 1.1.1 and 1.1.2 in AIA B101, 2017. My name is Mike Bamba, and I have Jimmy Germano with me here. We are both attorneys with the AIA Contract Documents team. As always, nothing provided in this video is intended to be legal advice. If you are in need of legal advice, the best thing to do is to contact a local attorney licensed in your jurisdiction to give advice based on the specific facts and circumstances surrounding your information. Jimmy Germano will be leading our discussion today, so I will turn it over to him. Thanks, Mike. Um, like Mike said, today we're going to be talking about uh, 101, and we're going to be talking about two sections. Uh, the owner's program, which is section 1.1.1. And then the project's physical characteristics, which is section 1.1.2. And although both of these sections are pretty short, uh, there's a lot in there. So let's dive right into the first, which is the owner's program. So when we talk about the owner's program, the owner's program usually includes a description of the owner's purpose and goals for the project. So this is intended to provide sort of a clear focus for the mutual understanding of the parties so that they understand the scope of the project. If the owner has a written program, uh, it should be identified here. Um, and it may or may not be an exhibit uh, and thereby incorporated into the agreement. And by completing section 1.1.1, the parties can either, like it says, you can either insert the program, meaning like copy and paste it um, in right into the B101 itself. You can identify the documentation that establishes the owner's program. So that would be like you're describing the program uh, as an attached booklet or attached sketch or, you know, however the program was put together. Um, or lastly, the parties can state the manner in which the program will be developed. So this would be like if the program does not yet exist. And like I said, the program typically contains the owner's purpose and goals for the project. So that's section 1.1.1. And let's go into section 1.1.2, the project's physical characteristics. The project's physical characteristics prompt, section 1.1.2, tells the parties to identify or describe pertinent information about the project's physical characteristics, such as size, location, dimensions, geotechnical reports, site boundaries, topographic surveys, traffic and utility studies, availability of public and private utilities and services, a legal description of the site, et cetera. Um, so, Section 1.1.2, the physical characteristics, what it typically contains is information that's related to the existing physical characteristics of the project. It's not the drawings or the specifications because they don't exist yet. Uh, they are what is intended to be the end result of the project, but things like location, dimensions, geotechnical reports, topographic surveys, utility studies, those are things that are going to describe the physical characteristics of the project uh, such that they, they should be included in 1.1.2. Including here a description of the physical characteristics of the project really helps to establish the expectations of the parties and define the scope. It also helps to identify or maybe highlight some unique characteristics of the project that may have an effect on the design. So with that, Mike, I think that sort of covers sections 1.1.1 and 1.1.2. Um, did I miss anything? I know that was great. I did want to revisit uh, something in the program, though. I think you had highlighted in the parenthetical where it indicates that you might have to provide the manner in which the program will be developed. Can you give a little, kind of explain maybe how that might work uh, if the program hasn't been provided in 1.1, but you've only stated the, the manner in which it will be developed? Yeah, sure. So this would be if an owner uh, approaches an architect and says, you know, I, I don't have a program yet, but I want to develop it maybe, and maybe I'll hire you to do that. Um, and that's, that's not atypical. 
if an architect is going to assist the owner in developing the program, um, they usually do so as part of either preliminary uh, and or schematic design. And that's usually as permissible. But the important thing to remember there is that the parties have to clearly spell out what exactly the scope is that's that's going to include uh, the development of the program so that the parties understand the expectations with respect to the development of the program. So that would be things like the scope of work, the compensation, if it's going to be an additional service, um, you know, whatever the case may be, to assist the owner in developing the program that will then give the architect the ability to develop the construction drawings uh, later on down. That makes sense? Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Again, uh, we appreciate your time. If you need more information, we have contact and resource information uh, up on the screen here. So please feel free to reach out. We have not only uh, document content uh, helplines, we also have uh, assistance with our online services. So uh, please feel free to reach out. Uh, and with that, I'll just uh, remind everyone that, as always, nothing in here was intended to be provided as legal advice. We encourage anyone who is in interested in receiving and, and talking in more detail about something uh, they are dealing with in the real world to contact a local attorney licensed in their jurisdiction. Thank you again for your time. We really appreciate it.